Welcome to Day Texts with Greg Stafford. We meet every weekday morning at 5 a.m. unless otherwise scheduled so that we can work our way through a reading of the different biblical books and letters and histories. We also consider related literature and subjects so that we can better our understanding of the past, apply things that we learn from what occurred before us to the present, and then create a better future for ourselves and for our world. We're Christian witnesses of Jah, so that means we worship the God Jah, we follow Jesus, and we try to treat others the way we want to be treated. Those are our three beliefs. We leave everything else to everyone else because we are all going to be judged individually anyway. But we do try to help others, and where we see others struggling, of course, if we can assist them in any way, we do. But we don't get involved in people's lives to try to tell them what to do or to do anything but help where we can. So as part of that, we do these day texts and um, we consider a portion of the records and we group verses together that pertain to the same subject, more or less. We also, at the start of each new book and letter, review the history of the text, some of the contextual features, manuscript authority. So if you'd like more information about the letter to the Hebrews, just go back to the first video in this series where I provide some of that information. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for joining me. So we're going to get right to today's text and then I'll give some updates on this Saturday and other general updates. But let's get right to it. We're going to read verses 7 through 11 of chapter 12. So Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. <clears throat> Good morning again to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and read those texts. You can follow along if you'd like, if you've got the YouTube page open. And in the description field, I put the text we're going to consider each day. So you can review it beforehand or during the show. I'm going to go ahead and start with verse 7 and read all the way through chapter 11. I may make a few comments or I may read all the way through. It just depends on the text and what kind of comments might be appropriate as I read through it. So let's get started. We'll start in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. <clears throat> there it reads, When it comes to discipline, you must remain strong. God is treating you like sons. For what son is there whom his father will not correct? But if you are without discipline, which all of us have come to share, then you are not legitimate sons. Verse 9, Moreover, on the one hand, we used to have our human fathers discipline us, and in turn, we gave them our respect. Should we not even more so, then, subject ourselves to the Father of spirits, and we will live? And you notice, let me just make a comment there in verse 8, that, that the legitimacy of sonship is not tied to the knowledge of the mother or father, but to being without discipline. That's very interesting. We'll come back to that. Let's get back to the text, and we'll start in verse 10. For our human fathers disciplined us for just a short while, perhaps for days. It sounds like they had restriction back then, too. According to what seemed right to them. But the Father of spirits disciplines us for our own good, with the result that we experience part of his holy character. Of course, on the one hand, discipline when it is taking place, never seems to make anyone happy, but instead a disciplined person is sad. Yet, after it is over, the discipline yields a peaceful reward. That is righteousness with God. So, we can see here the contrast that Paul makes, or the author of Hebrews makes, between human fathers and Jah. And so, you notice here that Jah is several times referred to as the father of spirits. See, he is the one, all of the sons of God are spirits. And he is the father spirit. But when we are disciplined by our human fathers, you know, I don't, any of us who have had that experience, we, don't, we know that's not pleasant. Nobody likes that. Just like the author says right here. It's the universal principle, I think, or truth, that nobody likes discipline. That is the act of being disciplined. I mean, I think we all have appreciated the fact that when we're disciplined and we learn something, and then, then we're happy we received the discipline. 
but nobody is really happy as the discipline is taking place because it's sort of a painful um, jolting experience depending on what is at issue. So when Ja, human fathers, you know, we get disciplined if we're doing our job and we're, we care for our children. We don't want to hurt them unnecessarily. That's not what a father does. But when we see them doing something that's going to hurt them later, we stop them because we know even though they're not hurting themselves now, what they're doing is going to lead to them being hurt later. They don't really see it yet because they're young. They haven't experienced what we have. It's the same thing with Ja. When he has something happen in your life that corrects what you're doing or changes what you're doing, that's Ja telling you this is going to end up hurting you down the road. So don't do this. Do this instead. Now, we still have to choose. Ja doesn't in most cases. I mean, there are times when Ja will essentially force someone like with Jonah, right? He tried to get out of his role in proclaiming uh, Ja's judgment. But Ja didn't let that happen. See, so if Ja wants you to do something, there are occasions where no matter what you think, as long as you're not openly rebelling and resisting him, if you're just having a hard time and you're afraid, he's going to force you into that situation because he knows you'll be okay. And he just knows you're afraid and you're not willing to do what he knows will be okay yet because we're immature. And so when Jah does that to us today, when something happens and it doesn't seem like it's a good thing, it is. It is if you're doing Jah's will and if you really take a close look at what's happening and you analyze the pros and cons, you will be able to tell whether or not the situation is actually to your benefit or not. And if you're serving Ja, you know, there are humans who will always try to get in your way. That's a fact, right? There are people who don't like what we do. I deal with it all the time. So, and other people do too. I'm not trying to say I'm a special case. My point is we're Christians. So there are going to be people who don't like what we do to the point where they will interfere with our lives. I have it happen to me all the time because there are certain groups of people who resist what I do so much, and they're so pathetic with their lives, and they can't do anything, even approaching trying to help other people in the right way, that they just try to attack other people who do, so that they don't have an example that reminds them of their failures every day. That's what they do. It's not that they don't have something else they'd rather do. They just don't like you. Okay? They don't want you to be doing the things that showed them what they should be doing, as I said. So you, you're, never, you're not always going to be able to understand all these things or put them together logically or, or see well, the, you know, what, what, what sense that decision makes. They're, people have their own reasons, and that's fine. You have to be prepared to accept the reality that Ja allows to occur or that you cause to happen and then move forward. Almost always, if you're serving Ja and you face difficulty, that difficulty is for a purpose. It's for either a purpose of setting you straight, correcting you, helping other people, or ultimately making you more disciplined so that you're prepared for the next level of trial, judgment, or peace and joy that God will give you as a reward. It just depends on where we are in life and what he wants us to do. So better that we're in Jah's hands doing what he says than in somebody else's hands doing what they say, right? So never forget that. If people want to work with you and assist you and you assist them and everybody moves forward, great. If that's not in the cards, I'm speaking figuratively. I don't believe in card reading. But if it's not uh, meant to be or if it's not something that's going to benefit you or even them, then you move on. Engage yourself in something else where you will be able to benefit people in the ways that you know how. And then watch for Jaws. Jah's blessing or his redirecting of you. Always be aware of the Spirit and the things it is leading you to because he is disciplining us in those ways. It says right here, and we believe these things from our history and past and our present, the things we see. So these texts are really just confirming from the perspective of other people the very same things we already know and have come to believe. Right? Who doesn't believe that when a father disciplines his son or daughter because they are doing something that will hurt them, that that's not love. 
Yet, who who will exceed, if you're the son or daughter, who, you rarely ever see that as love initially. So the challenge to the disciplined person is to be able to recognize the difference between love and non-love discipline. It's very difficult to see at the time, but when you think about it and you reflect on the reasons why the discipline occurred, you will be able to tell if it was fair, proportionate, or something that was not deserving. Okay, But we should always consider whether or not the discipline is deserving first. Rather than reject any type of correction and then try to work our way back to understanding its potential benefit. Always ask yourself, is this happening because of something I'm doing that I need to change or that is something that I should change with respect to my circumstances? You know, should I, in other words, should you be fighting the discipline or you, should you be yielding to it in a way that you understand so that you can take the corrective action? We have to understand the discipline, right? Or it's not going to be easy or even possible for us to take corrective action. So always be thinking about why something is happening to you and the potential reasons for it. Why, how will it benefit you to go through this process? And when you do that, I think it's, it's much easier to see because you become less emotive. Your emotions, the feeling toward the discipline or the... The situation isn't clouding your ability to see the benefit that can come through this corrective process. So <clears throat> when we see things in life like that, it is easier to endure versus saying, oh, Ja, why are you doing this to me? You know, I serve you and this thing's happening to me. I don't understand. That's We're not in a world where we're going to be protected from every difficulty. Nothing indicates that. In fact, everything indicates the exact opposite, that we are going to have difficulty. But it will never be to the point you cannot overcome. And then you get the reward. Then you feel satisfied and confident you're serving Jah no matter what happened, good or bad. Because one way or the other, this life has both good and bad. Better that you take the good with the bad when it comes to serving Jah than you know, with anybody else, right? what are they going to do for you? People of this world can only do certain limited things for us temporarily now, which we appreciate, but ultimately we look to Jah. We look to the Father of Spirits to discipline us for our own good, like verse 10 says, so that we can experience a part of His holy character. Everything Jah wants us to do is for our benefit. There's not something Jah says to do this here and it hurts us. It's the world and the situation we're in as we try to do Jah's will that makes it hard for us or that hurts us because we're trying to do better. So keep these things in mind. It is difficult. If you look at verse 11, it says, Discipline is never good at the time it's happening, but once it's over, you get a good reward. And we've all seen that. We've all gone through discipline with either our human fathers, employers, whatever. Nobody's perfect, so we have to be able to evaluate. First, is the discipline legitimate? Some people criticize you and they don't really have a right or they just don't like you. we got to accept that too, right? Not everybody's going to like us. But you need to ask yourself, is there something you should change because of the situation? Or is the situation being changed because it's not good for you? Once you answer that question, then you'll know what to do. So keep that in mind. Anytime you face difficulty or tests or discipline in this life from your father, your mother, anybody. Ask yourself if the, if the discipline is for a reason that you can identify and recognize within yourself or in this situation so that you can benefit from it. And or if it's not something that's appropriate or fair, then you deal with it accordingly. In any case, these texts do help us to remember the more simple things that we forget in life. That our relationship with Jah is just like a father. And that he's here to help us if we look to him. It's difficult because the world doesn't promote Jah. So everywhere we go, we see every, anything but Jah, most of the time. Well, that's why we make these videos, to try to help people to give them something else that they can view or listen to and remind yourself about the things that we've come to believe in connection with Jesus and the God Jah. All right, so that's a good text for us to consider. And I thank you all again for joining me this morning. So this Saturday, 
We're going to do uh, CW Jaw Talk. We're going to do part two of Ancient Aliens and Christians. I've got uh, several more clips I'm going to show. And then um, I've got a lot of good things planned. I've had a lot of things um, happen recently that will give me a great opportunity. Uh, like I was just talking about with the date text. You know, sometimes things happen. You don't always realize it right away or they're unexpected a little. And then you think about it and you realize, well, wait a minute. That's outstanding. So I have a, a lot of good things um, that are in development now. And a lot of my time has been freed up that will allow me to do a variety of other activities, finish the Proverbs translation, and continue to do these videos uh, so that we can help other people. So I will be back tomorrow for another day text. And then we'll finish out the week doing our day text right up to Saturday. And we'll do our CW Jaw Talk show. So I know someone mentioned whether or not we'd ever do a Sunday kind of congregational um, <clears throat> video gathering. And I'm, I'm thinking about different ways that that could be most effective. But let's keep building up the channel and getting uh, um, some more people involved as I work on the best way that I think we could do something like that. And of course, share your ideas with me if there's something you think could be done that would help people, uh, help others to come together more regularly in beneficial ways. I will definitely consider it. So that's it for today. I thank you all for joining me. I look forward to tomorrow's day text and then being with you all this Saturday for our CW Jaw Talk show. Until then, may Jaw bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.